Ignite your curiosity with Austin next. We're watching Austin transform from a thriving ecosystem into a global superstar. With our host, Jason Scharf, we aspire to better comprehend the true nature of innovation. Together, we will uncover what makes a successful ecosystem and navigate the technologies shaping our future. Now let's dive into what's next. Today's podcast is sponsored by Austin Private Wealth, a registered investment advisor focused on fee-only financial planning and investment management. Their mission is to serve affluent clients with personalized financial advice, fostering a trusted relationship that will endure for generations to come. Austin Private Wealth is not just about managing wealth. They're about inspiring you to embrace a future filled with possibilities and helping you architect enduring legacies. Their core values of integrity, service, caring, excellence, and growth are at the heart of everything they do. Connect with them today at austinprivatewealth.com. Austin Private Wealth is a registered investment advisor. Advisory services are only offered to clients or prospective clients where Austin Private Wealth and its representatives are properly licensed or exempt from licensure. No advice may be rendered by Austin Private Wealth unless a client service agreement is in place. Investing involves risk and possible loss of principal capital. Please seek advice from a licensed professional. Clearly, the Austin Entrepreneur ecosystem has been growing dramatically for the last several years. And with that growth has come a lot of new investors. Whether it be VCs building ever larger funds, entrepreneurs that are reinvesting earnings from their success, incubators and angels willing to help startups, there are a lot of people getting involved. But it's not just more money that's needed. It's a leveling up of these investors in the community, becoming more experienced and able to provide not just capital, but knowledge and experience. And that's where the new Austin Venture Association began. We're talking with C.S. Freeland, the co-founder and executive director of the AVA, which is helping to amplify, connect, and organize the local venture community. She's a multidisciplinary entrepreneur who's lived in Austin for over 12 years. In 2018, CS was tapped to create Austin's Mayor Steve Adler and Fort Worth's Mayor Betsy Price's successful re-election campaigns that ended up winning multiple awards in new digital strategy. She's also spent seven years at a venture studio, launching early concepts and helping to grow the portfolio of startups. CS has enjoyed speaking at universities, most recently in Davos during the World Economic Forum and other conferences on the topics of entrepreneurship, new leadership, future of venture, and government innovation. CS, welcome to Austin Next. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is fun. So let's start big picture in the beginning. What is the Austin Venture Association? Well, the Austin Venture Association is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we're mostly focused on getting the local startup investor community together. So while it's mostly venture capitalists, it's also incubators, accelerators, family office, growth, private equity, all the way up. And it's really getting the community together. And it's a fast growing one as well. So fun times to be building something like this. Well, it's still early days. Walk me through the origin story. How did this all get started? What was the, uh, the impetus for it? So we were kind of talking about, uh, there's like co-living situation. I was uh, living downtown at the Amley on 2nd and I had like just been furloughed, you know, during the pandemic, the onset in uh, March, 2020. And one of my mentors, she owned the boutique hotel. It's called Adina, A-D-I-N-A. And so it's this really great kind of luxury uh, boutique hotel, a couple blocks west of the Capitol building. She was just super devastated that when she's trying to launch in time for South by Southwest, obviously we know that that didn't go very well. And so I pitched her an idea. I was like, hey, if you let me and my startup friends and startup investor come in and, um, you, and, and live and work in the hotel, like we can, uh, you know, you, you can basically get like any type of revenue. And if you give us a good deal, then we could just, you know, have some fun with it and, you know, kind of surf the pandemic <laughs> kind of situation. Obviously, we didn't know how long pandemic was going to last for, but yeah, I legit lived in this like nice hotel <laughs> for the majority of 2020. I know it sounds kind of bougie or whatever, but I've always wanted to do that. And then suddenly found myself in the, in the weirdest world during pandemic and kind of living out my dreams with um, a lot of friends too. So um, while it first started as a uh, local thing, just a bunch of Austin entrepreneurs and, and business folks, it was really starting around February 2021. 
early into the summer where I was like, wow, there's kind of a lot of new people coming to Austin and more focused in, you know, startup and startup and investments. And it, it was less like, we kind of disperse. I, I told some folks from, we, we called that concept founder house. <laughs> so um, we kind of disperse. I was like, look guys, I think it's a good time for us to get into a long-term lease as much as possible, get a good deal. But um, the new folks that were coming in wanted something still like very short term, like a couple months, then maybe they would go to Miami, maybe they would go buy a house or something like that. But um, yeah, I just spent so much time connecting people into the startup community and, and venture community. And I was like, wow, I should really just tech myself out or something, call it a membership club. And we didn't have any one organization that helped to organize the venture community in town. So uh, that's sort of the founding story of the Austin Venture Association. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. Like Miami has like a nonprofit, you know, venture association, Denver, and like all the other kind of up and coming pandemic, you know, quote unquote pandemic cities. Yeah, just a really great time to be building something like this. And looking back, yeah, my intuition was right. I had some folks tell me, you know, CS, we like your idea, but I don't know if we really need a venture association or a venture club. Um, we already kind of know each other and we do deals with each other. And do we need to be like that close with each other? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably like good. And I was like, wow, that's so surprising. Like, that's not what I'm seeing. I just have been meeting so many new people. I was like, wow, I feel like I could still like literally start a club for new people to get to know each other. And uh, yeah, the venture scene in Austin has more than quadrupled. We maybe almost had 20 venture firms that considered Austin as their headquarters and um, seeing that number is closer to like over 80 now. You know, as an entrepreneur, I just feel like people who are moving here now are early for what's about to be the biggest boom town we've ever seen. It, you know, internet plus pandemic, where do people want to live? It's a handful of cities and we're lucky just, I'm very lucky too, personally, just to have been here. So one of the, there's kind of the newcomers versus the, I don't want to say old guard, but you know, the established players that are here, are you seeing a lot of integration? I mean, obviously one of the worst case scenarios is you have kind of two different worlds. Um, and you talked about AVA being, you know, at least for starting for newcomers, but how, how are you seeing that integration between kind of the established players and the uh, new ones coming in, either whether they're small or large? Yeah, I don't know if I'm seeing a lot of that. I think that if you're at the heads of these firms, there's like a warm intro. Yeah, like dinner parties are happening. There's, um, you know, more intimate like meetings, but it's not... I haven't really seen that, um, which is the opportunity for something like AB8 to come along. And I think this is good. You know, if we want to have really great investors, they'll definitely take up the opportunity to be known and, and meet others that can um, send them interesting founders. So, I mean, if you're really a great investor, you'll be known and um, and you'll be still networking and you'll still be growing and Looking forward to that, more of that. So then what are, would you say, are the overarching goals for AVA? You know, it's really crazy because we re we mostly formed because even six months ago, having in-person events was a thing. <laughs> That's something that we all wanted. Really leading with um, where, where we stand in the community is kind of going a little bit higher end and like invite only curated guest lists and curated experiences. So yeah, it's focused on events right now, basically one event every quarter and uh, making sure that that's a really great experience. And maybe there are experiences that you can't really get in Austin any other way. There's a lot of like dinner parties. There's a lot of like coffee meet and greets and happy hours, like show up to a bar. But um, really, it, we're having a lot of fun with it, you know, having uh some curated experiences because I mean, look, when people come here, they they want to get to know other people too, but they want to get to know Austin as well. So that's something that we're focused on, and then really looking to introduce memberships too. This whole time we've been focused on 
events, but really launching a memberships model would just make a lot of sense for a professional development organization. So getting um, more serious on that, and we've got a portal um, up and coming. One thing I'm really excited to talk about is we'll be having some more serious programming. I think that the parties are great. <laughs> you know, they're, they're really nice and the community definitely wanted something like that. But um, I think that venture building will be very different over the next couple of months and on into the next year. So getting the community together around panels and workshops, how can we help the startup founders, uh, whether that's extend the runway, just getting smarter on how they're spending money and the partners that they work with um, is really going to be um, something really important. So we're having um, what was going to be like a venture day, like one day full of programming focused on venture building and better investors. Um, and then one of our sponsors was like, well, we have folks flying in. Why don't we do a happy hour the night before, you know, if you're in town by then? And another um, sponsor was like, well, why don't we have a, a brunch the next day, you know, after the panels? And it's going to be like female founders. It keeps getting founders. bigger and bigger. Yeah, like one big brunch and like uh, we'll have food catered in. And uh, yeah, I was like, wow, it ended up being more of a venture week. And as you know, like in Austin, there's already so many events. Like how do we plan and carve out like our own days? Because then we got like ACL coming up and then there's like Formula One and then there's like startup week and all this stuff. So I'm like, well, we'll just lean into it and call it like Venture Fest. And if you want to stay for the weekend, there's really great ACL lineup coming <laughs> come up. So yeah, I'm really excited about that, having a venture week. And I've been working with a bunch of venture capital firms downtown, bringing together like a venture crawl. So, you know, kind of the bar hop experience, but with venture capital firms all within like a six or seven block radius in downtown and uh, we really have a lot of fun with that. So let us give you a chance to, to do a promo. When is this going to happen? Yeah, yeah, it'll be the first week of October. So I think the dates are that week be October 4th, 5th and 6th. That's great. Let me ask you a question. You've, you, you've talked about two different groups. You've got the one group, which is the investors, everything from the angels through the VCs. And then you talk about the startup companies, the founders and the entrepreneurs. Which do you really see as AVA's target audience, or are you trying to serve both? Yeah, target audience is mostly VCs, but, you know, of course, and, and I'm a founder and entrepreneur myself, so of course we'll be sneaking in some of the more venture-backed uh, companies. They have a very different set of challenges that founders in the earliest stages, you know, with just an idea and all that stuff, they just have very different problems, so... What are you seeing in the Austin innovation ecosystem that was really lacking and that for the needs for AVA to come into fruition, right? What, what was the, what does it say about the, the ecosystem that we needed a group such as this? Mm, um, what would I call it? <laughs> uh, like a can do attitude. Like what do we need people who really want to go do something <laughs> Like solve it with some ingenuity, like don't not being complacent. I feel like we love to talk about how awesome Austin is. You know, a lot of times like, wow, what a great city. And it's obviously an attractive one and attracts a lot of people. But really, it's like I almost I was very happy in life. Like I didn't have to start an Austin Venture Association. I actually sat on the idea for months. <laughs> I'm like, man, really, is no one going to do anything about this? Like, we're in a very different time in our lives. We've never had a world like this before. And uh, it's like, to me, one of the best times to be building because everyone just sitting around and waiting, <laughs> you know, and this goes all the way up to it's not just on a founder level. Everyone's just like waiting to see what's going to happen. People waiting to IPO. They're going to see what the IPO market's going to be like. People just wait. So yeah, maybe there's some of that or a lot more of that in Austin. But people always say that about Austin too. Like, do we have like the biggest thinkers here? Do we have the most creative minds? Are people doing stuff? That's like, that is the issue. That's what's not being done. So 
I think that's going to change, you know, obviously it's changing or like the onset of pandemic, there was entrepreneurs who started quickly building. They were like running. It's going to be good. You know, <laughs> it's going to be fine. I like thinking about the challenges and like, what is Austin not doing? But I'm, I'm very, I'm feeling very positive about it. Well, let's pick up right there on what you were talking about as far as the challenges. What is Austin not doing and where do we need to go as far as funding and, and entrepreneurship here? I think it would be, the, the, again, the change in mentality. Like if we see entrepreneurs working on something, their community really needs to get together and support them as much as possible. People kind of just wait around. And I even see people just waiting around to see how an entrepreneur is going to do. Like, I know that that is kind of just the general sense of how entrepreneurship is. Like, they're doing something a little bit different and unique. But if you want to foster a really great community, we got to help them. Like, help them make connections, cut a check, you know, sit on their board, do as much as possible. There's, like, very actionable things to, to be done. So that's that's what I would say. We have so many things going on here. I mean, clearly the changes in, that are coming to Austin just in terms of the chip and semiconductor sector have been incredible just since the, the short time that, that we've been here. But obviously Tesla's here and we have other EV manufacturers. What do you see in terms of how this is going to impact funding? Are we looking at just much bigger, much or funded companies coming here and taking advantage of this great place? Or are we seeing a, a growth in the entrepreneurial side as well? Yeah, I feel like we're really lucky that if we, if you're lucky enough to be working remote or even in cases like Tesla where you're not working remote, <laughs> um, no matter what, businesses are coming here and they will stay here. And it's like, and um, important to note the mentality of people who are coming here. They're picking a, a city because it's business friendly. And I think that the you know entrepreneurial mindset will accentuate more in the future as well. And it, we'll get, we're going to get more competitive. We'll be a, a true force. We always get a question like, oh, is Austin going to be like the next Silicon Valley? Is the next like type of whatever? Uh, Austin be the next like really incredible city, a city that like we have never known before. It's internet plus pandemic, you know? And yeah, you can get on a paddleboard too and have a really great life. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it. We've always talked about it not being the next Silicon Valley, but rather the first Austin. It is just so different. It blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind like silicon valley you had to be there like you could just you could be in austin because you like want to have a really great life <laughs> you know the food and culture well food is a big part of culture here but it's like the lifestyle we have never known a world like that ever none of us so i'm very very excited about it <laughs> well we're two years plus since the lockdowns and the beginning of the pandemic where do we have to go to be where the puck is going as opposed to where the puck is? What's the next innovation? What's next? <laughs> it's just here. Where do we have to be? Man, we're so lucky. We are, a lot of us are already here. And it's almost like I meet people who are like a couple weeks here in town. I've also met people who have been like 30 plus years or they're just an Austinite their entire lives. So uh, where do we need to be? We, we need to be right here and even the mentality is getting there too i would say last summer um was still still kind of like old austin mentality old like kind of like for pandemic anywhere now i think the people that are really gonna be leaders um they'll, they'll rise to the top are people who are very action oriented they're gonna try a lot of different things those type of people, they look like entrepreneurs. That would be an entrepreneur. <laughs> and what I'm really excited about what I'm seeing, and I don't feel like that's usually talked about a lot, is that we have to um, empower women. We need to have a diverse, you know, set of leadership, diverse set of experiences. So right now, you could look at, you know, a networking room and like startups or venture. And right now, you see mostly like certain demographics. We all know we're, you know, we know that's like a, just like a tired 
story, you know, it's just what we're experiencing right now. But what's next is like, I'm not really concerned about like the future of things. The people that I work with, um, if they're at the heads of the organization, the venture capitalists, they're the GPs, they're the top, or people in the middle, people like just anyone. I'm just very excited that the future is looking very differently. I'm not concerned about it. Um, I see. I'm wor- I work with some killer people, and they look and think very, very differently. And so I'm really excited about it. And that will be just the next couple of years too. There are some very killer people uh, that I've been lucky to work with. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that we've always seen in terms of the uh, innovation structure to make it really sustainable. You end up having to talk about how do we. I'm going to use the word recycling. It's not a great word for this, but how do we move people from being, gee, they're the number three person at X company and it goes well and they have their liquidity event. How do we get not only the talent that we've created, but the funding as well to be cycled back into the economy to the next set of entrepreneurs and the next set of businesses? Because once you have that cycle, then it's much more of a sustainable kind of situation. How do we help them do that? I think that... Yeah, we can we can help people. We can have like programming. We can have, you know, communities form like the Austin Venture Association to help people get to the next level. But I think that in general, people have come to this conclusion that being an entrepreneur really might save you. I mean, look at all the layoffs happening right now. I mean, I think it's a, it's a lot of right sizing. Um, it's just kind of really crazy. Even a couple of months ago, <laughs> just like valuations expectations. I know I was at some of these parties, you would hear about these companies and be like, what in the world? But so there's a lot of right sizing going on. But then people are like, no, I kind of need to be my own boss. You know, I kind of want my own schedule. I kind of want to do my own business. So yeah, I think that's what we're going to see. How do we get those people to be even more entrepreneurial? Um, My answer is, they were kind of forced to. They just had no other choice, too, whether that's quality of life, whether that's the city or state that you're in. Um, and people are very resilient, too. The people who are the next leaders have already started their path. And um, we'll be living in a, di- in a very different world, and I'm so excited for them. Life is not perfect. We always have challenges. What do you see the, the biggest challenges here in Austin? We talked about infrastructure, we've talked about water, we've talked about talent. What do you see as the biggest uh, challenges we face? No matter what, I would say in a broad sense, you know, for for Austin or for Texas in general, but even personally too, the biggest challenge is the mindset. I always believe like no matter if you think that you can or you think that you can't, you're right. You're right. So to solve a problem, no matter what problem that is, with a level of ingenuity and creativity and firepower, you will go very, very far. And the people that are coming to Austin, the people who are like taking leadership positions in this city and like doing something, whether that's in politics or entrepreneurship or anything, that's really going to be it. So yeah, very excited. I'm very grateful to just be here. And in this position, I get to see a lot of people working on stuff that's really going to create a better future for us. So to be the most supportive and get the community around that, it's just going to be really important. Well, we always end our podcast with our signature question. CS, what's next, Austin? What's next is um, already happening. You know, I think I kind of stated it earlier uh, in the interview, but People are working on really interesting stuff right now, and I feel very lucky to be in a capacity where I see this at an insane level, the sheer velocity. So what's next? It's already happening, and um, I'm very excited about it. (laughs) C.S. Freeland, founder of the Austin Venture Association. Thank you so much for being on the Austin Next podcast. Thanks. Thanks for having me, y'all. So what's next, Austin? We're glad you've joined us on this journey. Please subscribe at your favorite podcast catcher, leave us a review, and let your colleagues know about us. This will help us grow the podcast and continue bringing you unique interviews and insights. Thanks again for listening and see you soon.